Well, hello everyone. Here we are. Um, Armchair Chats is going to start in just a few moments, but tonight our hosts are Joe and Glenda and we're really pleased to um, be here. We're in our home sitting in our little kitchen and uh, <laughs> got our Maggie dog there and listening in intently to everything. Yeah, she knows her name, everything that's going on tonight. So we're just going to have a bit of a chat um, about uh, fatherhood, some of the attributes of God, because Father's Day is coming up. So we're just going to wait for a few people to jump online. Um, hi, everyone. Hi, Richard. Good to see you. I expect uh, Lorraine's around there somewhere too. Um, it's nice to see people. So we, of course, we're just going to chat away while we're waiting for people to come on. Um, we hope you've had a really great week. Isn't it wonderful to see some of that sunshine? It was so mm -hmm. warm. I think went out for a walk with the dog today and it completely um, uh, was, oh, was far overdressed for such a beautiful sunny day. It was um, just beautiful to go out. And there's Lynn. Hi, Lynn. You're a pretty Hi, Lynn. regular viewer of our armchair chats. It's lovely to see you. Yeah. So, um, yeah, tonight we're just going to have a bit of a chat around the topic of fatherhood and some of the attributes of God. And um, from next week, I'm planning on running a, a short series across our Wednesday nights on um, the Lord's Prayer. And, and I guess it, in a way, it follows on from what we're doing. Um, hello, David. David Skeet, one of our beautiful friends. Hi, Hi. And Heather. We're just greeting everyone. Hi, how are you doing? Um, yes, yeah, so I'm going to be doing a series on the Lord's Prayer because um, fatherhood um, is kind of the topic of the moment with Father's Day being on Sunday. But that's how Jesus taught his disciples to pray, was to say, mm -hmm. Our Father in heaven. So we're going to have a look um, at the Lord's Prayer next week for a couple of weeks, probably a few weeks. So um, I hope you'll enjoy that. So, well, welcome. Welcome to our little home. And uh, we, we love that we can connect this way. And I love seeing people's names pop up and saying hello. And it just reminds us that even in all this isolation, we can still be connected, still greet one another and, um, and communicate with one another and uh, stay connected this way. So thank goodness for mm. technology. You know, and if we didn't have it, I guess necessity is the mother of invention. We'd find a way, wouldn't we? Because... That's the way we're created to be connected with one another. Yeah, so tonight Joe and I are just going to have a bit of a chat um, about fatherhood, about the attributes of God, and it's just um, some ideas um, from a, a little Bible study on fatherhood. But of course, we're just going to put our own little <laughs> Norden spin on it, and that's okay. Can you see Joe? Do you need to pop up there a bit? You further? can see me. Can you see Joe? Are we all in the. I'm in it. In it? Nathan and Diana, are you Hello, watching? Hello, Yeah. <laughs> Hi there. Yeah, it's just good to see everyone. So we really invite you to jump on. Let us know that you're there. Right here at the start, we want to let you know we're going to do something really fun and special for Father's Day. Now, as you know, we can't can, um, gather yet. We're still in um, isolation. We're still in... Um, level three restrictions here in Gippsland, but that means we can't gather together as a church. But we think we've got a little way to celebrate Father's Day anyway, because, you know, um, here at Moen Your Life Centre, we just love to have a reason to celebrate. Hello, Kelly. Hey, <laughs> yeah, we love to celebrate. We love to um, connect with people. So this Father's Day on Sunday, we're going to actually bring the Love Gippsland van out of hibernation. And it's going to be on the block at the back of the church. And um, you can order a, a coffee or a chai or a hot chocolate and a, a little container of goodies that are home-baked muffins and bickies and things that are, um, some of our girls are lovingly baking this week. And uh, so there's going to be some homemade treats and a cup of coffee. And uh, what you can do is um, some of our girls are going to be ringing around and saying hi and connecting with you and taking your order. But if you don't hear from them, you jump online uh, on our church number is um, 51, I always forget it when I go to say it, 51261569. And you can place an order there with me and I'll make sure that Nathan and Diana get your order. We're going to start the coffee run from quarter past 11. So our morning service is on from 10 o'clock. Jump on for the online service. Gather your family around 
have church together in your living room there and uh, Keith's going to be preaching it's going to be a really good day and uh, so we'll have our online service from 10 till 11 then at about quarter past 11 you can either drop down here uh, drop down to the church yourself or send send your lackeys out <laughs> to come and pick up your coffee and uh, a muffin uh, or a biscuit you know there's going to be some homemade treats there ready for you so and there's going to be you can drive up the um up the uh, lane the laneway drive in grab your coffee and your treat and then drive out and drive back around out. and drive See out again lane. so it's just going to be a bit of fun you'll be seeing people you can dip some horns give people a wave and you know maybe connect with some of our church family and friends so i'm looking forward to that i think it's just going to be chaos but it's going to be fun and uh, just a little way to connect and a little way to say thank you to our dads because we love you and we care about you okay so i might mention that again at the end but right now we're just going to um get stuck into this little um study on the fatherhood of god so um we just wanted to talk about some of the attributes of our Heavenly Father. You know, God is a good Father. He's a good and perfect Father. And when we talk about our dads and our fathers, it can evoke different things for different people, can't it? And for some people, it's feelings of comfort and feelings of um, joy and, and, and families around the hearth or learning mm -hmm. to drive and really nice things. But for some people, it might evoke other things, you know. For some, it might be comfort, security, love, all those things. And for others, it might evoke anger or anxiety. But you know what? God, our Heavenly Father, He's a perfect dad, perfect father, and He's loving and kind and generous. And uh, we're going to talk about some of His attributes. And uh, as I mentioned before, Jesus had a, a wonderful, special, of course, relationship with his Heavenly Father. And he taught his disciples to pray, Our Father. And uh, and he would say, you know, I and my Father are one. And he wouldn't do anything without talking to his dad about um, what are we going to do here, Father. You know, and he wouldn't. And he said, I only do what I hear the Father say and do what I see the Father do. And so he had that special relationship with God where, where they just talked and communicated all the time so you know we've got to learn who god is through his word because if we just take our earthly experience of what our dads are like and think oh that's what our heavenly father's like that's not always true you know we might have the best dad in the world i reckon i had one of the best dads in the whole world yeah, love my dad he was a great dad he's resilient and loving and you know he, he was he disciplined us of course but you know he's a great dad but even the best dad in the whole world um, can't measure up at all to our Father God, to Abba Father, to our Father God. So we're just going to have a look at some attributes of our Heavenly Father. So we need to go to the Word and the Holy Spirit will, will teach us who God is because that's what He does. He reveals the Heavenly Father to us. He reveals Jesus to us. Okay, so... He teaches us and he doesn't want us to rest and rely on our earthly experiences. And um, I'm just going to read, or Joe, Joe can read this out of um, Exodus. And it's just a bit of a um, conversation between Moses and God. And I want to draw a few things out of that um, passage to talk yep. about <laughs> some of the attributes of God. So let's just listen to this these few verses. Yeah. Um... Verse 12, one day Moses said to the Lord, you've been telling me, take these people up to the promised land, but you haven't told me whom you will send with me. You've told me I know you by name. I look favourably on you. If it is true that you look favourably on me, let me know your ways so I may understand you more fully and continue to enjoy your favour. And remember that this nation is your very own people. The Lord replied, I will personally go on with you, Moses, and I will give you rest. Everything will be fine for you. And Moses said, if you don't personally go with us, don't make us leave this place. How will anyone know that you look favourably on me, on me and on your people, if you don't go with us? For your presence among us sets your people and me apart from all other people on the earth. 
the Lord replied to Moses, I will indeed do what you have asked, for I look favourably on you and I know you by name. What a great passage. You know, Joe and I were talking about this before about, mm. you know, if there's one thing I might be a little bit jealous of, it's it's this idea that Moses actually had that literal face-to-face, face-to-face um, yeah. uh, -face, um, uh, connection with God and he'd have those conversations with God and, and every day the people would see Moses or leave the camp and go up to the mountain and have his... Um, conversation with God and then come back down the mountain and as you know some um, uh, a little further on that um, hey yeah Sorry. Nathan and I hi guys <laughs> and that um, Nathan sometimes would even have to wear a veil over his face because the glory of the Lord shone so brightly from him having that um, personal encounter with the Lord and I just think that's really wonderful but you know what we now have full access into the presence of mm. God through what Jesus did for us. And we can have that kind of relationship with God. So we can talk with God and he can talk with us and we, and we share that beautiful relationship. That's what it's all about, isn't it? You know, God's a perfect parent and he loves us and he values us. And I'd go as far to say he adores us. He calls us his beloved, doesn't he? And, and yes. he loves us like that. So if you want to be a great dad... And uh, you want to be the best earthly father you can be. Perhaps it's a good idea to get to know your heavenly father and who he is. And um, and these are just going to be some of the attributes that we've, we've just pulled out of these few scriptures. Um, and maybe a couple more we stuck in as we go. Yeah. So the first thing is, you know, Moses said, you've given me this bunch of people to look after. So how am I going to do this? I can't do it on my own. And I think with parenting kids, we're not supposed to do it on our own. God wants to parent with us and we need to let God parent with us. You know, and he's the, he's the best example of a father. Mm. And so if you want to learn how to be a great dad, you need to spend time with your heavenly father. He said in Exodus thirty three fourteen 14, um, that I will go with you. God promised Moses that he would go with him and he was going Thank to show you. him, okay, Personally, yeah, I will personally go with you. And God promises us as parents that he's personally going to go with us and um, never mm. leave us. And that's a really good thing because I don't think, you know, we wouldn't have done this parent gig without the Lord. And literally God would tell us how to go about things, didn't he? Mm. Do you remember that time we had, I'm not going to mention names, don't worry, but one of our kids had played up pretty bad. Yeah. And um, we thought, what are we, how are we going to deal with this? We really didn't know. It was like worse than normal. Yeah. <laughs> so we thought, how do we deal with this? We've really got to put a nail on this and, and you know, um, correct this behaviour. How do we do it? Mm. And what we said, we said to our child, I'm not even going to mention if it was a boy or a girl, but we said, look, <laughs> we're all going to go to bed. You know you're in trouble. We don't know how we're going to deal with this right now, but we'll let you know in the morning sent them to bed, we went to bed, we prayed about it before we went to sleep and said, Lord, show us how to manage this situation. So we went to bed, we got up in the morning, I went off and had my shower and stuff and came back in and I said, okay, Joe, how are we going to deal with this? And Joe had written down everything that he said it, it, that the Lord had said to him of how we were going to deal with this situation. And, I, and he said, what's the Lord said to you? And I said, well, you know, praying while I was in the shower and getting ready. And I told Joe what the Lord had told me. And then he read back what the Lord had told him. And it was almost identical what God had told us on how to manage this situation. Mm -hmm. You know, and we really appreciated so much our Heavenly Father's intervention into our yeah. parenting. Because, you know, without the Lord, I think we... Could have really stuck that up bad. But anyway, we always say, you know, with the Lord though, you know, our kids are great and we love each one of them. And um, But there were times, really times when I think, I don't know how we would have done it without the Lord. Yeah. You agree? Yep. Yeah. So God's with you all the time and, um, and our Heavenly Father is always around. You know, and, and he's there in the good times and in the bad times, isn't he? Mm. And he's our comfort and our safe place, you know, and that's another thing that I remember sometimes running home in the dark after girl guides 
and uh, you know we'd run my sister and I Gail we'd run home because it got dark in the street Norway was a pretty not a not the safest place not the most scary place <laughs> so we'd run home you know and just to see dad sitting there in his chair where he always was and doing what he always did and just he was there you know and that's how our heavenly father mm. is he's just always there um yeah, yeah. so Father God's got plans and things for us to do, but we can't do it in our own strength. Mm. Yeah. So do you, do you remember anything about your dad? Where? Well, yeah, I'm a little bit like him, I suppose, in that he was a bit impatient and so was I. <laughs> With um, There's a tractor situation over at, um, when we were over at, um, oh, up near Kerrang anyway. Um, I forgot the name of the joint. Doesn't that like Kuna or something? Kuna, that's yeah. right living over there and um, we had a grey Fergie tractor and uh, Dad, you know, we wanted to go and feed the hay and, and, and I was a bit impatient. I said, when are we going to feed the hay, Dad? Strikeys, strikeys, that means a little later. And then I asked him again a little while later, he said, when are we going to feed the hay? Strikeys. All right, but then after a little while I thought, strikeys got to be up by now, so I went out, started the tractor up and Dad come out. What are you doing? <laughs> so anyway, just got to have a bit of patience. He, he, he knows, he looks after you, you know, the earthly father looks after you, but the heavenly father really looks after you. Yeah. Really well. He knows everything about you. He does. He knows you. He mm. knows how you work. He knows how you tick. And, uh, you know, and even when we have done the wrong thing, it's, it delights his heart, though, that we actually come back to him and not run away. And, you mm. know, we come back to him. Um so, you know, our dads have always got words of wisdom and things that they want to say and things that they want to teach us. And, you know, Joe's dad was trying to teach him maybe a bit of patience there, but mm -hmm. Joe ran out of patience, you know. But I think the good thing about your dad and, and, probably, and my dad too was that we could trust them. We could trust them yeah. so much that they were always mm. there. And even if we did muck up, you know, they, they were just good dads. And, that, you know, even if we got disciplined, we know that that discipline came from a place of love. Yeah. Yeah. Not love doing it so much. Yeah, not yeah, we didn't love it when it happened, but we know that they loved us and that's why they did it. And um, you know, God knows us by name, doesn't he? And we're his children and we're unique and we've always said, you know, we've got five amazing kids and we had a lot of other kids in and out of our home, but our five kids, you know, they're all beautiful and we love them each, but they're all unique and he knows us by mm. name and um and that's what um he said to Moses, isn't it, you know, I'll go with you and I'll do what you ask for I look favourably on you and I know you by name and you can look on each of your kids favourably and you know them each by name and you and you know their heart and, uh, and you know, we. I'm just reading what my daughter's <laughs> writing to us now. You can trust, I can trust my dad to always give me what I ask for and to be a good dad. <laughs> Well, you didn't always get what you asked for, but you always got what was good for you. And uh, and that's it's maybe what we ask for and what you get are two different things. And that's actually another point I wanted to make, that God provides for us. Yes. So he loves us. He is trustworthy. He, he's our comfort. He's our rest. Um, he's always there. We know he's always there. He knows us by name. And Jesus said, my sheep know my voice and he knows us by name. And and God does know us by name, and the Bible talks about that God's got our names printed on the palms of His hands. You know, mm. and, and I just see God there sometimes with His hands, Must have and, a big hand, a big hand. But you know that that that's right where He is, where we are, right in the palms of His hands. Mm. You know, and another attribute is that He provides for us. Don't read it because it's distracting. I'll read it in a minute. He provides for us. Some people have unreasonable expectations. <laughs> And um, and then, you know, we get frustrated because we didn't get exactly what we wanted. Um, but you know what? Sometimes God says no, just like you've had to say yeah. no, you know. But we thank you, Diana and Nathan, for your comments, yeah. And I know Joe is an extremely generous dad and is an extremely generous man, but even sometimes then we've got to say no. And um, But it's not no because we're being selfish or withholding from you. Because God doesn't withhold from us just because he can. 
because he is generous and he's got a generous and loving heart and he wants to provide for us in every single way. But sometimes we think we need something, but God knows the better thing. Mm -hmm. And so sometimes it seems like he doesn't answer the prayer, but he does answer it. He just answers it. And, and the Bible talks about that he gives us um, super abundantly above everything that we could ask for. And, yeah. uh, and you know, that's pretty cool, isn't it? So God's pleased with us. All right, he'll supply our need according to his riches in glory. And uh, sometimes as parents we say no because mm. we have. You jump in. Yeah. I know I'm doing all the talking, but you <laughs> jump in if you want to jump in. Yeah. I was going to say with God, he, um, he answers the, he, the, our prayers at the right time. His time is the right time. Our time, we're always impatient. We want it now. And God and he, says and what? He says, Strucky. Wait. Strucky's. <laughs> <laughs> Strucky's. That's my new word now, Strucky's. You know, sometimes uh, we've got to wait for God because, yeah, he wants us to be patient. And mm. sometimes, like, he knows what's coming down the track and he knows the things that we need down there. And, um, and he'll provide what we need when we need it. Yep. And I think that's something we've really had to learn, isn't it? And we have learned it, I think. You know, we've been married now for 43 and, and a half years. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's been good. It, I mean, it hasn't always been, um, you know, we haven't always been flush. With, is, we've had our um, problems sometimes and all of that kind of thing. But, mm. you know, uh, God has always been good to us and he's always provided for us. But sometimes we've had to wait. Sometimes yes. it has been like, God, are you listening to us? And all that kind of thing. <laughs> yeah, but um, God provides us in the right time. Yeah, and and yeah, yeah. Diana and Nathan have been learning that because like they were all set and ready to go off to the United, mm -hmm. but they couldn't sell their house, they couldn't sell their property, they couldn't sell the business, all of those things. And then look what happened. We've had this um, pandemic that you know Joe and I are just so pleased that they're not there in the in Texas at this time, <laughs> and uh, we're so glad that they're here. But now things are starting to open up and change for them, and you mm -hmm. know. Um, we can see that God is starting to, to move now for them, whereas he wasn't withholding from them to hurt them or because they didn't deserve it, but God knew the end from the beginning. God's timing is and different God's to timing our is timing. Different. Yep. So the other thing we've learned about God is that he's, um, God's pleased with us. Yes, yeah, mm. very pleased with us. And he loves us deeply. And what's it say in verse 17 there? Exodus 33, 17, the Lord replied to Moses, I will indeed but do what you have asked, for I look favourably on you, and I know you by name. And you can say that with every person. I know you by name. I look favourably on you. So Yeah, yeah. So And God wants to bless us. He does look favourably on us. All right, when he looks at you, he looks at you with love. He looks at you with, um, hello, Josiah. He looks at us with favour. You know, like when I Josiah. see my little Josiah's name there, you know, we look on him with favour. We look on our kids and our grandkids with favour because we love them and we care about them. So um, he looks at us with favour and he's pleased with us, you know. So we want to bless our kids and God finds pleasure in us and we mm. find pleasure in blessing our children and our grandchildren. And you know what, even in our brokenness and even in our humanity and even when our kids are played up and even, and you'll find that parents, you know, your kids play up, but that doesn't change how much you love them and care about them. God's love so big that he cares enough to love us and restore us and forgive us. So he's more interested, isn't he, in, in our relationship yes. with him. And that, like I said, instead of running away, like, you know, Joe tells stories of his <laughs> mum and dad chasing him around with well, dad, logs of wood. <laughs> <laughs> dad, Joe, when, when, I'm, when he's angry with me and I've done something wrong, I know to run. <laughs> Otherwise he'll catch me and whop me. <laughs> yeah, but we know the Bible says that, you know. Discipline's good. Yeah, well, this, yeah, but <laughs> parents shouldn't let their anger take over no. either. And God doesn't. He doesn't punish us in anger. He, he disciplines us to help us turn around and go the right way. That's what repentance is about. So mm. if we come to God, that's something I've really learned. When you've done something you shouldn't do 
or somehow feel in your heart that, you know, you've let God down somehow or something like that, you know, what the Holy Spirit's taught us is not to run away from God, but to come mm. back to him actually. Yep. And and because who he loves, he disciplines. And we know that that's under his beautiful hand, that he cares about us and disciplines us to bring us back to him yep. and to bring us to maturity. So I'm just going to run through these last things really quickly. So he pays attention to us because he cares for us. And I think we said a bit before, we love each of our kids and we, lo and we love them um, equally. We love them with an equal value mm. of love, but, but we express it differently and um, mm. because they each needed different things. Yep. Like I said, you know... All some needs are different. Yeah, their needs are mm. different and we discipline them differently. We love them the same, you know, like um, what we were saying before. You know, some of the boys, you had to have a pretty heavy hand. With with a couple of the kids and and uh, but but with Diana for instance we'd only look at her sideways and she'd melt into tears you know and <laughs> yep I think I only remember her getting one hiding ever in her whole life yeah that's right Joan says yeah we might break mm -hmm. fellowship but that can't um, alter our relationship with the that's Lord that's right Amen so God knows Amen. your name. God knows uh, you are always on his heart and he cares mm. about you and what you need. And um, and you know what? He cares about how you feel. He's, and, you know, we don't like to, you know, some guys don't like thinking, oh, God's just this, you know, soppy, oh, I love you and, I, and you know, how are you feeling? You know, how did that make you feel? You know, the famous kind of words. But he's not God, a psychologist. He's not a psychologist. <laughs> but, he, but he's the best psychologist, actually, because he understands how our yeah. brains work and he understands how our hearts work. So he hears us and he hears our prayers. Mm. And he has compassion on us. He has, he's so compassionate. 2 Corinthians 30 verse 9 says, The Lord is gracious and compassionate. Two and he won't... Two Chronicles, sorry. And he won't turn his face from you if you return to him. And that's, I think, a theme that's been coming through this, that um, we shouldn't be afraid of God, that we hold him in awe and esteem because he's sovereign and he is Lord, but he is our dad. And so we shouldn't be afraid of him and he wants us to return to him. There's nothing we can do that would make him love us less than what he mm. loves us or um, send us away from his presence. He wants us to come to his presence, doesn't he? So, and he loves us, and I put down, he loves us, tears, snot, um, disappointment, um, you know, no matter what's been going on in our lives, he loves us. And he's gracious, isn't he? Yeah. And he, he's forgiving, and he lavishes his best on us, and he's patient, and he's faithful, and just, you know, earthly fathers, sometimes they misuse punishment, but God is loving and kind and patient. Yes. And he's sure. also fair and just. Yeah. yeah. So the Lord disciplines those he loves. But isn't it good to know, you know, the big story is that Christ, the, the Son of God, took mm. our punishment for our sin and he gives us his righteousness, his holiness, his, and he sanctifies us, you know. Mm. But in our relationship with God, we know that um, because he's a good father, He's loving, he's kind, he's gracious. He will always welcome us back, doesn't he? Yeah. And he, hmm? you go. Our fathers were never um, like God, as in um, uh, controlling their emotions and things like that. But God, God knows how to do all that, you see. Yeah. But our fathers were to learn that sort of stuff. We have to learn how to have self-control. How to, how, yeah, have self-control, how to discipline our children without getting angry and, and all that sort of stuff. Mm -hmm. So we sort of resemble God the Father in a fashion, but he's the perfect father. Yeah. He, he, he shows us what we can do yeah. when you're born again. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. And I guess that's just what we wanted to say, that, you know, you, Dad, you're doing an amazing job and we really want to honour you. And don't forget about our special treat on Sunday with the coffee van um, and expect a phone call from some of our ladies are going to be calling around and, and taking your orders for your coffee or hot chocolate or chai or whatever you want there and uh, a treat and we want to treat you and honour you 
And so um, if you're in a household where there's a dad there, you can order for your dad and come and pick it up and take it to him yep. for a surprise or bring him down and pick up his coffee and his treat on Sunday morning. So let's just pray. Do you want to just pray for the dads? And... Yep. Hey, oh Lord, Heavenly Father, we just bless you, Lord. We just thank you because you are our Father, our Father God. And Lord, our earthly fathers here lord they do what they can father and they i know lord that they'll ask you for help too father in in uh, disciplining their children or guiding them directing them lord so give them strength give them wisdom to know what to say to their children to what to um to do their father god just bless them lord and strengthen them all lord and help us all lord to see that you love us all equally and we thank you for that, Lord, in Jesus' name. Mm. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Okay, Amen. it's been absolutely lovely to hang out with you guys mm. tonight. And I know we've probably gone a bit longer than usual armchair chat, but we had to both hit in words. <laughs> so, and, uh, and that's been fun. So um, don't forget our online service on Sunday morning at 10 o'clock. And uh, mm. don't forget if you've got any needs or anything that you want, <laughs> just call welcome, us. Dye. Welcome, Di. Call us, contact us. Um, by email, on our website, on our Facebook page or our phone number 51261569 and we will get back to you. We'll pray with you and uh, talk to you and uh, you'd be welcome. So thanks everyone for joining us tonight and we love you and care about each one of you and I hope we'll catch up with you again on Sunday. See you later. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.